Hello and welcome to this video on creating a serverless .NET Core 2.1 web API with AWS Lambda. In this video, we'll look at how we can create a .NET Core 2.1 web API, then publish this to our AWS account. Our demo web API will be looking at creating a shopping list, allowing us to add, remove, and get our items from a shopping list. I'll also take you through some of the differences between .NET Core Web API Lambda and a standard .NET Core Web API. We'll then look at how we can publish our Lambda and interact with it. Let's first quickly talk about what a Lambda is. Lambda is a serverless product that AWS offers. When you hear the word serverless, it sounds like there would be no servers, when in actual fact, there are behind the scenes. What Lambda offers is the ability to manage the servers for you. You push your code up and all the scaling and server management is done for you. One of the advantages to using Lambda is the cost of execution. You're only charged for the time your code is executing. If your code is only active for 30 minutes, you only pay for 30 minutes. This can greatly reduce the cost of hosting and running your code. There are two common Lambda models, creating an AWS Lambda project and an AWS serverless application. When creating an AWS Lambda project, this is a C-sharp class with a function. This function can be triggered by events or executed from another application. An example function could be you create a Lambda function that scans and checks the log files for certain events or entries from CloudTrail or CloudWatch. You could then use another AWS resource such as Simple Notification Service, SNS, to send out a notification if these events or entries have been found. The second is the serverless application. This utilizes the API Gateway Proxy integration. The proxy forwards all requests coming through to the Lambda function. This is then passed off to the AWS.NET Core pipeline. This means you have an ASP.NET Core middleware at your disposal. When using the Lambda serverless application, it's handled slightly differently. A request comes into the API gateway, this is then passed on to the Lambda, and then passed on to ASP.NET Core. If you are creating a .NET Core web API, and you want it as a Lambda, this is the one to use. Before we get started on the demo, there's three things that you need to have. You need to have Visual Studio 2017. You also need an AWS account. And thirdly, you need the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio. Instructions and links on how to create each of these are in the description below. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our project. We're going to head up to File, New Project, and under the AWS Lambda project, we're going to select the AWS Serverless application. We're going to call our application Lambda Shopping List Web API. Select OK and then we're presented with some blueprints, basically templates. We're going to use the ASP.NET Core Web API template. Select Finish. When using a template, you're often given stuff that you don't actually need, and that's the same in this case here. We're given code to do with S3, but we're not actually dealing with S3 in this project, so we're going to delete some of that stuff. We're going to delete the two controllers, and we're going to head over to the serverless.template file, and get rid of anything to do with S3. So our serverless.template file should end up looking like this. We'll come back to the serverless.template file and discuss what it is and what it does in two seconds. Let's first have a look at two other files. The Lambda entry point. This is the entry point that will be used when we have our project inside AWS. Then we have the local entry point file. This is so that we can debug and use our application locally. This is really important because we want to be able to test our application before pushing it up into AWS. And back over to the serverless.template. The Lambda entry point is configured inside the serverless.template as a handler for all traffic coming through the API gateway. The proxy plus sign in the path means that this function handler is configured as a proxy resource, and all traffic coming in on that path will be sent to the function handler async method. This particular method exists on the API Gateway Proxy Function base class, and is part of the AWS Lambda for .NET Core library. You're more than welcome to go and have a look at the source code for that function, but what it essentially does is that it marshals the requests coming in from the API Gateway to the ASP.NET Core pipeline. 
From that point, the normal ASP.NET Core pipeline takes over, and you are presented with all the greatness that comes with that. Routing, model binding, etc. Okay, so let's start by adding the code needed to create our shopping list web API. First, I'm going to add a controller, and I'm going to call it shopping list controller. I'm going to add a route up to the top. This is the way that we can interact with each of the methods inside our controller class. So we're going to say v1 shopping list. We're going to have three methods. We're going to have a get, a post, and a delete. The get is going to get our shopping list, post is going to allow us to add items to our shopping list, and the delete is going to allow us to delete any items from our shopping list. So first things first, let's say get shopping list. And I'll set a return OK so that the project builds. And now we're going to call off to a services class to get our items. At the moment we don't have any of these services uh, created so you're going to see some red squiggly lines. But we'll use wishful programming which means that we are going to pretend that it's there and we're going to start creating methods that we want to use and then create the items and classes after the fact. So get items from shopping list and we don't need to pass anything in. And we'll want to save the results from the shopping list. And we'll pass that result back to the user. Okay, so shopping list you can see is red and we don't have that at the moment. So let's create a service. So under folders, I'm going to create a folder called services. And in the services folder, I'm going to create a class called shopping list service. And I also want to have an interface so that I can dependency inject it as well. So I'm going to say I shopping list service. And using Resharper, I'm just going to allow Resharper to create that for me. And I'm also going to move it into its own file as well. Okay, so heading back to the class shopping list. Okay, so let's create our first method, which is going to be public. We're going to have a return type of dictionary. That's going to take in a string and an int. The string is going to be the name of the item, and int is going to be the quantity. And we'll say get items from shopping list, which matches up to our method call from our controller, takes in no parameters, and we simply want to return a shopping list dictionary, which we don't have at the moment, but let's create that in a second. Okay, so at the top here we want to create a dictionary, so we'll say private read only dictionary of string and int, and we'll call that shopping list storage. And we'll instantiate that. Great, now, so we have a dictionary up the top here. And we have a method, our first method, which will get the items from a shopping list. Let's make sure that we put this method signature into our interface as well. And we'll import the dictionary type. Let's head back to our controller. Now we need to dependency inject this into the top of our class. So we're going to say private read only i shopping list which is the interface we created before i shopping list service and we can call this shopping list service and i'm going to let resharper instantiate the field into the constructor and also we need to dependency inject it into the startup as well so we're heading along to startup file and we'll say services dot add singleton and we'll pass in the i shopping list service and bind that to the shopping list service class. Okay, so that's great. So now we have a way to be able to grab our items from our shopping list. The only thing is that we have no items in our shopping list and we have no way to add those items. So let's create the next method, which is going to be the post. Okay, so first we're going to add a decorator. We're going to say HTTP post. 
And now we're going to write out public a return type of i action result and we'll say add item to shopping list. This is going to take in a shopping list model that we don't currently have. And we're going to receive the shopping list model by the body of the request coming in. So we'll say from body. Let's create our shopping list model before we go any further. I'm going to create a folder here called models. And in that folder I'll create a class called shopping list model. And we're going to have two properties in here. So the first is going to be the name of the item. And the second is going to be the quantity. Heading back to our shopping list controller, we can now import that reference. Let's call off to our shopping list service. And we'll say add items to shopping list. And we'll pass in the shopping list that's been stored up in our parameters. So we don't have an add items to shopping list, so let's create that now in our shopping list service. We're going to have a void return type. Create that method in our shopping list service. And we're going to say shopping list storage, which is our dictionary, and we're going to add to that. And we're going to pass in the shopping list name for the item and shopping list dot quantity. Perfect. So when we add an item, it's going to add the name as the string and the quantity as the int into our dictionary. Getting back to our shopping list controller, we want to return OK when it's successful. And finally, let's create a delete so we can get rid of items if we need to. So we'll say HTTP delete as the attribute. And we'll public I action result again. Delete items from shopping list. We'll also pass in the shopping list model. So we know what item to delete. And we'll do that from the body of the request coming in. Call off to our shopping list service again and we'll say remove item. And we want to pass in the name of the item that we want to remove. And if that's successful, we'll return back in OK. Let's create that remove item. Okay, so let's call our dictionary again and we'll say remove, pass it in the shopping list name. Perfect. Save and build that. Head back to our shopping list controller. Everything looks to be working. So now let's test this. So we're going to grab the local host and head over to Postman and enter the local host with our route v1 shopping list. So if we try get at the moment, there's no items in the shopping list. But let's add an item. So we're going to head over to post. The first item we're going to add is milk, the quantity of one. So we'll select send. Let's add some bread as well. And let's say we need five loaves of bread. So we'll hit send. Head back to our get. Cool, so now we see that we've got two items in our shopping list. What happens if we want to remove one? Let's head over to delete. Let's say we didn't actually want five loaves of bread. So we just need to pass in the bread and the delete. And if we head back to our get, we see that we only have milk here. Okay, so now it's time to deploy to AWS and create our Lambda. The good thing about deploying to Lambda from Visual Studio is that the AWS toolkit now provides a pretty easy way to be able to do this. So all we have to do is right click on our solution and you'll see that you'll have a publish to AWS Lambda. Make sure that you've got the AWS toolkit enabled and installed. Okay, so first you need to create an account. I have my account already set up, but if I didn't, I would select add another account and I would need to add an access and secret key. 
if we head along to AWS console, under IAM roles and users, this is where I'd add a user to be able to give me the access and secret key. Once you've created your user profile, select region you want, make sure the framework's .NET Core 2.1 for the latest, and we also need to create an S3 bucket. I have a bucket set up here, but if I didn't, I could create a new one here saying temp123 S3 bucket. Select OK. And what that would do would create a bucket in our AWS console. So heading back over to AWS console, if we head along to S3, we can see the temp123 bucket has been created here. And you also need your stack name. So let's call this shopping list Lambda Web API. And that's pretty much it. Let's publish the application. Okay, so that's our application uploaded into S3. Now it's going to create the stack behind the scenes, including our Lambda. You see that we have a create in progress up here. We'll wait until that says create complete. Okay, so that should be completed. Let's head over to our AWS console again and head over to Lambda. Make sure that it's been created. And you'll see our shopping list Lambda has been created here. Awesome. Um, you've got monitoring if you need to uh, view any of your logs. You've also got view logs in CloudWatch as well. Okay, so let's test to make sure that this is working. You'll notice that we were given an AWS serverless URL. So this is the URL that we can use to hit our service. So we head along to Postman. We put our URL with our route that we uh, added to our controller, which is V1 shopping list and we're using the get. We'll hit send. We've got a 200 back, but nothing in our list. That's right, because we haven't added anything yet. So let's add something now. Head on to post. In the body, we're going to add bread and a quantity of one. Select, we've got 200 back, great. Let's add milk again, a quantity of two. Hit send, 200 back. Now let's see if we have our shopping list. Awesome, we have bread and milk. And of course, if we want to delete something, we'll head along to our delete endpoint and we can just delete milk. Back to get, and milk's now gone. So we've just created a simple .NET Core 2.1 application, then pushed it up into AWS's Lambda. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with all my latest YouTube tutorials.